What's up, everyone? Excited to give this video today about NEO, which is a Chinese EV car maker. So this stock has been on a crazy tear over the past couple months, rising from about seven bucks to ten dollars. So a massive run up for this company over the past couple of weeks to months. So the question is, is this rally sustainable? And I will definitely answer that question throughout this video. So in this video, what I'll be doing is I'll be going over the chart and giving a price prediction based on technical analysis. Then I will dive into the, the stock's fun, fundamentals and I will go over their financials and compare their financials to the financials of the peers to see if this stock is overvalued and how it's how much growth metrics are, how its profitability metrics are relative to the peers. So with that being said, let's dive right in. So first off, this is not financial advice. And when we look at the technical setup here, so we, we crossed over the 200-day moving average for the first time since 2021. Um, so obviously, that's a very big sign, a very good sign of bullish momentum for shares. So this is the first time We've moved over this 200-day moving average since November of 2021. So really a good sign for the stock there. And then when we look at support and resistance, we have a major resistance level at about $12.87, which is where shares had topped out in January of 2023. It's also where shares had topped out in December of 2022. So it seems as if that level right there is pretty firm resistance and we could likely see some consolidation around that level. So my official prediction is we see shares bottom out at this 200 day moving average and continue higher over the coming weeks to about $12.80. I think NEO is likely to continue higher. Of course, let's say the market, you know, falls off a cliff over the next couple of weeks. Well, you know, this technical setup for the stock would likely not play out. But I'm of the opinion that, you know, all things being equal, this 200 day moving average will hold and we'll see a move higher over the coming weeks. That being said, let's take a look at some seasonality trends for the stock. So, in July, shares typically jump 5.9%. So this is a bullish seasonal month for, for the stock. And this screen kind of shows me which months are the best for NEO, which months are the worst. And we can see here that July is a typical bullish month for the stock. And we have another bullish month in August. So seasonality trends are lining up with the bulls. And then let's take a look at this article written by Victor Dingron. Uh, definitely said his last name wrong, but Neo delivered 500, excuse me, 54,000 vehicles in the first half of this year and should increase sales significantly in the second half of 2023. Neo Q1 revenues came in at about $1.5 billion and should provide approximately. 1.2 to 1.3 billion in sales for the second quarter. However, this quarter should be a significant low point for NEO as sales should increase to about 5.6 billion in the second half. That's a massive increase and NEO recently has recently had a stock run up which illustrates that market is that that the market is behind the curve on NEO and could chase the stock higher as we advance those numbers. NEO's second half revenue of approximately $5.6 billion would be a staggering increase of about 100% from the first half of the year. Moreover, higher end revenue estimates project NEO could deliver around $6.3 billion in revenues in this year's second half. Therefore, NEO NEO's total 2023 revenues could come in at around $9 to $10 billion. NEO's market cap is only about $18 billion here, illustrating a relatively inexpensive two times this year's sale valuation in NEO stock. Moreover, NEO could deliver revenue of about $15 billion next year, suggesting its stock is trading at 1.2 times forward sales, which is pretty cheap. Um, so interesting to see there. And then we'll, when we take a look at why did Q2 sales drop off a cliff? Well, China's economy struggled with the increased COVID-19 restrictions 
and a slowdown of its domestic economy in the second quarter. Moreover, Tesla's price cuts likely negatively impacted NEO's Q2 sales. Nevertheless, NEO's sales bounced back swiftly in June, thus the company the company slowed down in sales, which should be transitory. And with the introduction of NEO's newest vehicles, we should see a robust rebound in the second half. And then what makes NEO unique? And I always think this is a very important thing to cover when when we're taking a look at a a stock that is in a very saturated market, right? Like there there are a lot of EV players out there now. Pretty much every legacy uh, car maker has an EV division at this point. Despite the presence of other major EV players in China, NEO remains unique. Um, BYD, is a significant auto player in China, but is not a pure play EV company. Moreover, many BYD vehicles are aimed at lower slash cheap end of, of the market and may not directly compete with NEO. XPEV is an exciting company, but it focuses on several specific vehicles aimed at the similar cheaper end of the market. Tesla's closest competitor to NEO in it is Neo just in in regard to luxury, quality, performance, capabilities, range, and price. Moreover, if we take a closer look at Neo's updated lineup, it has cars that closely resemble and can adequately com- compete with Tesla's S3 XY lineup of vehicles. So. I think Tesla has done a pretty good job expanding its market into China, as this article suggests. Tesla has sales in China nearly 78, excuse me, 78,000 vehicles in May. However, China has ins, insatiable EV demand and the most significant car market on the earth, especially for EVs. Therefore, China is big enough for several key players including Tesla, NEO, and others. We can see here that these June delivery numbers really did pale in comparison to April and May, where we saw a pretty big decline from March and February. So we definitely love to see that rebound in deliveries for NEO. That's very important for the company. Definitely think we need to continue to see a rebound in deliveries for the company. As I said, the whole China reopening from the COVID, um, you know, whole situation that has been a little, a little slower to, um, positively impact economic activity, um, than people had originally expected. So you can expect as we get more, more, more and more people being able to leave their homes in China. Well, we should see hopefully that translate into more, more consumer spending, more discretionary income within China. So hopefully we see China, China's reopening start to positively affect economic activity, which would obviously positively affect NEO's delivery numbers. That being said, let's take a look at the valuation for the company. So obviously right now the company doesn't make any money. At this current time though, we are at a 1.92 price to sales ratio, which is pretty solid when you consider that the sector median is at 1.2. So when you consider that that this is a pure EV play, that's a pretty good number for the company. And then when we take a look at price to book ratio of 6.1, that's not a horrible number considering the sector median is at 2.3. For those that don't know, that basically puts the market cap relative to the book value of the company. So This says that the market cap is 6.1 times the book value of this company, which isn't a shabby number and definitely does imply that the company has a good amount of assets on its balance sheet, hence that high book value. With that being said, though, let's take a look at the growth numbers for the company. So anytime we see a company trading at high valuations, investors are paying up for for the shares of the stock. That tells you that investors are expecting that stock to eventually be profitable, right? And a a big part of moving towards profitability is to have revenue growth numbers and growth numbers in general that are very positive. And I can definitely say we have that for NEO. So NEO has 31% revenue growth year over year compared to the sector median of 9.1. 
And then revenue growth for the next 12 months is 33% compared to the sector median of 6.8%. So good to see for NEO, for, for the bulls, to see that the company is trading at mass, it has massive growth. Um, definitely always need to see that when you have a company that doesn't make any money. With that being said, let's take a look at some of the profitability. So gross profit margin is at 7.8% which for those that don't know, gross profit is basically just revenue minus cost of goods sold. It tells you what a company makes on what it sells. So 7.8 is a pretty good number for the stock. And then we have $1.30 of cash per share for the company, which makes up about 10% of the market cap, which is, is definitely a good number and does provide somewhat of a floor for the stock as 10% of the market cap is in cash. With that being said, though, let's take a look at the stock compared to its peers. So we can see here the stock has underperformed the peers with Nissan being the outperformer of the peer group. And you can see uh, NEO here with, with that orange line at minus 49% for the past year. So the stock's been out, underperforming the peers. And then when we take a look at valuation and how that matches up relative to the peers... Well, we can see that Porsche is has a positive EPS, is making money. Lucid is projected to trade at a minus 10 times PE in three years, which is obviously pretty gross. And then XPEV here is minus 19 PE and minus 51 PE for year three here. Year, that, and then that's basically just three years out. So these numbers don't look great, to be honest. Um, and... Obviously, the, the peers don't look great either, but when, when I'm seeing a, a company per, project out to still be unprofitable three years down the line, that's definitely a cause for concern and makes me somewhat worried about shares. As I said, price to book value is 6.1, which is actually the highest price to book value amongst all peers. So once again, valuation numbers look absolutely horrible when you compare them to the peers. And even on a, uh, to be fair though, on a price to sales basis, they look much better than Peer Lucid here and XPEV. So they have a 2.4 price to, I mean, excuse me, price to sales ratio, which is better than Lucid and XPEV here. So at least decent price to sales numbers. And then growth numbers look really, really good. So they're, they're beating almost all the peers besides Lucid in growth numbers so solid growth always need to see solid growth for a company that isn't making money so that's a very important number for neo and then when we take a look at gross profit margin 7.8 percent gross profit margin is well below nissan but it is it is above lucid and right around xpeb so this negative lucid number for gross profit margin basically just tells you that the company doesn't make money when it sells a car unlike neo which is making money for every car that they sell but this gross profit margin doesn't take into account the other costs of running a business outside of just you know cost of goods sold minus revenue that's how neo isn't making money although its gross profit margin is is profitable and then when we take a look at short interest neo has eight percent of the float sold short compared to lucid which has 20 and xpev which has 9.5 so overall neo has a lower short interest um rating here or excuse me um, short interest percent as a as a percent of float compared to the peers and then when we take a look at total cash relative to debt so this looks really good for the company. The, the balance sheet looks very positive. So the company does have more cash than debt. It actually has 16, excuse me, $612 million more cash than debt, which is an awesome situation to be in. It basically implies to me that the company won't have to issue shares anytime soon to help fund fu future operations, which is a good thing for shareholders. And, you know, Compare that to, to Porsche, which has $7 billion more debt than cash. But Lucid is, is in a similar situation as well. They have $2.9 billion in cash, $2.3 billion in debt. So they have $600 million more cash than debt, which is a good sign for the company. XPEV is also in, in a similar situation. They have $1.4 billion in more cash 
than debt, which is a good sign. So the balance sheet looks okay, but it's basically in line with the peers. So it's not really outperforming any peers. Overall, I would say these financials, when you compare them to peers, look pretty poor and definitely are a cause for concern when you're thinking about investing in NEO. So my personal opinion for NEO is you should tread lightly in this stock. This is also a Chinese stock for for those that, that don't know, there's major tensions between the U.S. and China with the whole Taiwan conflict. So that could lead to some restrictions on investment in China, which definitely implies that investors should tread lightly in Chinese stocks and NEO not being any exception to that rule. So it's my, my personal opinion that you should um, you know proceed with some caution here. But like I said, the the technicals do look somewhat bullish as we come back down to test that 200 day moving average that we broke above for the first time since 2021. So that's my opinion on NEO. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. If you got some value from this video, please leave a like. We post company breakdowns and important market moving news on this channel on a daily basis. So make sure you are subscribed. If you would like to receive my daily portfolio moves, my exits, my entries, and see how me and my team of analysts are trading the markets, join the Discord through the link in the description below to get our free 7-day trial. Also, if you would like to join our free daily newsletter, sign up to our Substack, which is linked below as well. With that being said, good luck everyone, happy trading, happy investing.